Well, uh, good morning. Now, I know that y'all saw the title and you're thinking, what in the world is he talking about or could be talking about? Well, let me let me give you a little brief history on this one. See, when I was a, a child and I was a teenager, there was a church that I went to and there was a particular deacon who sat in the front of the church and he would always say, hold your hope. That's what he would say. Hold your hope. When the pastor was preaching. And as teenagers, we didn't really understand what he was saying. We thought that he was saying, hold your hope. Now, what we found out later on, a few years later, that he actually said was saying, hold your hope. Hold your hope. So, but if I was left to my own teenage mind and, and was never questioned and, and went off on my own and just took that as my interpretation, then that message of hold your hope will preach a little bit differently. You see, it will preach in such a way that you would have to stand back and tell the men of the church that when you come to church, bring your wife with you. Yes. And but also bring your hope with you to church, you know, and and when you're at the church house, when you're sitting there, set your wife on your left hand side because your wife is closer to your heart you know and she's the spiritual and emotional strength of the husband so bring your wife instead of that but but then bring your hoe and set her on the right hand side because that's your power side and and when your hoe is on your power side and you're feeling the stresses of the world and you're going out there and trying to fight this world then you hold on to your hoe and she helps you to relieve that physical stress so that you can maintain your center and go out there and fight this world and keep your strength up so again your wife is on the left with the spirit and your hope is on the right I mean you're on the right with your power so that you can go out there and maintain your equilibrium to fight this world so hold your hope hold your hope if I was left to my own understanding if I was left to just hearing something not investigating to find out exactly what was said then that could have been my interpretation so what I'm getting what I want to get across to everybody today is when you are listening to something when you hear something when you read something you need to know what the words mean if you're reading something that is old you need to know what the translations really mean have the translations changed are they incorrect translation when you go from the Hebrew to the Greek to the um, the Latin to the English do they all maintain a correct line of thought a correct line of understanding are you getting that or was there a change or a confusion or an addition or a taking of way what occurred within the translation when somebody speaks something are they speaking it and if they are from some other country some other culture what does that mean to their culture and when you look at things historically, what did it mean in that time frame? You know, a, a, a teacher of mine used to talk about a phrase. I don't know if it's a real one or not, but he called it historism. Historism. It was to him. It meant when you take something that happened 800 years ago, but you give it the morality of today. So like we look at slavery in America and we see and we say it's awful, it's horrible. And the people of that time frame, they're all sinners and they're all going to hell. But understand, in the culture of America two, three hundred years ago, or you know, actually less than that. But in that time frame, it was justified. It was justified. They justified it through the Bible. They justified it through their religion. They justified it through their culture. It was just the norm of the culture. You were born into it. That's just how things work. So when we go back and we look at it from today's standpoint, from today's standard, from today's morality, we look at it differently. But if to truly, but to truly understand the people of that day, and I'm not saying that they were right or anything like that, of course. But to truly understand it, you have to first take a step back and look at it from their point of view and their culture, and have that. That's the only way you can have an understanding of it. So when you're looking at your spiritual development and growth then when you look at it, you have to understand that the words that were spoken, what did it mean to those people in that particular area? Because if something was spoken to the people in Egypt, it had a different understanding and meaning to the people in Rome. It had a different understanding and meaning to the people in India. It had a different understanding and meaning to the people, the Native Americans. So you have to understand the culture of the people in order to understand what the meaning of the words and the monuments and the hieroglyphs and everything that was left behind. So 
even though I started this out as a joke based on a misunderstanding and interpretation when I was a kid, I need you to understand as an adult, you have to have the maturity and the courage to go back and look and find out what did things mean. Don't just sit there and take from the speaker whatever they say because I took things from the speaker as a child and it caused me to push away from certain organizations, push away from certain beliefs because as I got, but when I got older, I learned that they really didn't know what they were talking about, that they had an understanding based on what they understood that day. OK, so you guys need to do that. You, you, you should do that. You know, I know that a lot of people say, you know, you got to study so to show yourself approved. But really, what are you studying? If you just studying the words that have already been given to you in front of your face, then you're really not studying. You have to study deeper. You have to go into higher levels of understanding. You have to know what was going on in the culture. You have to understand the history of what you're reading, how it came about, because without knowing that, then you can never understand it. You will never, ever truly understand it and have a full knowledge of truth until you actually go back and look at how it came about, who input what, who did what, and what the culture believed in and how things have changed. So, hey, like I said, have your wife on your left, have your hoe on your right. If you maintain that understanding, I guarantee that there is a group of people out there who will follow that without ever truly knowing where it came from and the misunderstanding, the miscommunication that happened. So have a great day. Be willing to lose everything to gain everything because my greatness and your greatness is non-negotiable. And I got to end this one by saying, hold your hope.